mazuri unayoendelea kutu tembea katika taifa letu. Asante tena karibu sana Mheshimiwa Rais. Interior Dr. Fred Mendes. The Chief the General of the National Police Service speaks from the in the person of the Department of Members of Parliament are here on institutions that are helping us and Ravi and his team for the wonderful work they have continued to do. Uh, firearms that they are not authorized uh, to use. The reforms in the security sector are working. Um, who have worked very closely with us, uh, including respect. Uh, just this morning I gave you one example of change in the firearms licensing and control board. Even from the revenue alone and the discourse and we have a better way of where we need to go. We have challenges in our country that are going to be paying close attention, I found in this particular. Again, one answer in the security sector that have enabled us to yield resiliency. My colleagues and I can promise that we will continue to work that way because we'll keep a bit the general and his team of us and all my colleagues brother, the peers uh, in the development that we must do. Ladies and gentlemen, as we welcome His Excellency, our President, to address us, Your Excellency. Good afternoon, everybody. We also, through the same fire, retire from circulation as we destroy homemade guns that have been used to cities and indeed the entire nation collective sacrifices, the lives that would have been lost to armed attacks are saved. And this I say because statistics have revealed
What we are doing here today is further testament that the police reforms, uh, the security sector reforms that you have been driving, are actually working. I am so grateful to the huge number of colleagues we have been working with uh, on this matter, including the institutions that are helping us with the small arms uh, menace in the region. I want to thank uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Moravia, and his team for the wonderful work they have continued to do uh, in sensitizing uh, the population and encouraging our people to refrain from accessing and using uh, firearms that they are not authorized uh, to use. Your Excellency, in just two years, because last year, we, in 2019, we were together in Magadi when you destroyed over 8,000 firearms, and today again, uh, with the over 5,000 we have here, in two years alone, uh, we are destroying over 14,000 uh, firearms that are in uh, illegal hands. Again, as I say, it is evidence that the reforms in the security sector are working. A lot of this work has been done in collaboration with uh, several development partners um, who have worked very closely with us, uh, including um, uh, the UN and UNDP uh, and bilateral agencies with whom we have agreements. We are very grateful to them for the support they have rendered to the Secretariat and to the people who are working on this. My two last points are, are this one, to thank you very sincerely because, as I said when we were launching the Police Leadership Institute, these things don't happen everywhere very oftenly. It takes leadership to get us here. Uh, Your Excellency, when you took the oath of office in 2013, uh, we were not here in many respects. Uh, just this morning, I gave you one example of the reforms you have directly supervised yourself, the change in the firearms licensing and control board. And Mr. Mukindia is here, and he can testify even from the revenue alone and the, the entire digitization process that you demanded must be done, we are now in greater control of the firearms in private hands than we were before. We have better records and we have a better way of keeping track uh, of uh, the firearms that we license people to have. And this is the way we need to go. We have challenges in our country. Uh, especially parts of the northern part of our country and uh, areas like Marsabit. And Your Excellency, as you have instructed us, my colleagues and I are going to be paying close attention to what happens here and use a multiplicity of uh, ways of dealing with the small arms that are found in this particular area. I urge that we continue to work together as you have instructed us to ensure that we deliver these results. Finally, sir, Again, one other evidence that we have today is that your multi-agents uh, uh, approach of working in the security sector again is delivering results. You instructed that we all get together from time to time. This is not work to be done by the police alone. This is not work to be done by our colleagues in the KWS alone or in the KDF alone. And over the last uh, several years, sir, we have fostered solid and strong relations in the security sector that have enabled us to yield results such as we are seeing here today. We do not have an option because this has worked and uh, your, your Excellency, my colleagues and I can promise that we will continue to work that way because this is the only way we uh, can achieve uh, results for our people because if we have guns in the wrong hands, 
then we do not enjoy the security we need and we cannot develop our country in the long run. We'll keep at it. Finally, I, I want to thank all my colleagues who have been working on this. Our Inspector General and his team have worked very hard. I want to thank the CDF for the support that he has given and his uh, capacity that has uh, helped us this way. There's one person who's not here but has been a very active and solid supporter of this process in very many ways, the Director General of the National Intelligence Service, General Kameru and his people have worked very well with us. And all my colleagues in the ministry, uh, you know, led by my sister, the PS, and my brother, the PS, in ensuring that uh, we move in the direction we are moving. Your Excellency, we are ready, prepared, and uh, committed to follow the line you have drawn for us to achieve the results you desire, namely keep our country uh, safe and keep our environment uh, silent so that we can engage uh, in the development that we must do. Today, we put an additional fire of freedom to secure the values that we all hold so deeply and we cherish and affirm as we also, through the same fire, retire from circulation obsolete state-owned small arms and light weapons that are now redundant to our nation's defense and security, but also as we destroy homemade guns that have been used to threaten the lives of our people. I am really glad to note that the majority of the illegal firearms that I'm mentioning today were voluntarily surrendered by members of the public who heeded our various amnesty programs and calls for community disarmament. And a large number of those weapons were also recovered through the diligence of our security organs who conducted security operations that yielded in these recoveries. In that regard, I want through UIG and all other security agencies as well as conscientious members of our public, including our religious and community leaders, for this high sense of civic duty and for the tremendous effort in this national endeavor. Our families, our communities, and indeed the entire nation will be safer today because of your individual and collective acts. Attention, the task of a peaceful and secure Kenya is a responsibility of each and every Kenyan. And I urge you all in your own roles and space to make a conscientious effort to make our country, our republic, more safe and more secure and 100% free of illegal weapons. As I conclude, I would just like to say three points. One. I do believe that our push towards a 100% transition is something, especially in our education from primary to secondary, is something that will yield positive results so that through education, our people can abandon some of our negative cultural habits and adopt and be able to engage each other, first and foremost to protect the positive aspects of our respective cultures, but also to be able to tool our young men especially with the necessary skills to be able to become productive and not destructive because of your individual and collective sacrifices, the lives that would have been lost to armed attacks are saved. And this, I say, because statistics have revealed that small arms and light weapons claim more than half a million lives worldwide each year, and over 80% of these are women and children. Ladies and gentlemen, the administration's commitment to secure the lives of Kenyans as required by our Constitution, 
has emboldened our, reserve, our resolve to fight against the proliferation of illicit arms, and we continue to affirm the importance of this issue through our various regional, continental, global, and diplo global diplomatic channels. By publicly destroying illicit weapons, Kenya once again openly demonstrates that we are determined and ready to face the challenges posed by small arms and light weapons. Kenya's recovery of illicit small arms and light weapons is in tandem with the African Union's call for silencing the guns in Africa by the year 2020. Although this AU target has not been fully achieved by the deadline that we set for ourselves, individual countries, including our own Kenya, have made excellent progress towards that goal. As we say, we are grateful for the progress made. It is, however, important to point out that notwithstanding successes made that have given rise to even today's event, we must always recognize that the fight is not yet won. The Eastern African region remains awash with illegal small arms and light weapons, some of which are likely to continue to find their way into our country. We need to collect all illegal weapons in Kenya and across the region in order to rebuild real peace in our communities. And I therefore call upon all our citizens who may in any way and for whatever reason be in possession of illegal firearms to submit the weapons to our authorities under the cover of the amnesty for illegal possession of firearms. An illegal gun makes you less safe, not more safe. An illegal gun, no matter how good your intentions, makes you a criminal and liable to face the full force of the law. If you have any security concerns, please let us work together. Your recourse is to engage the government, not to confront it. And we, is my promise, shall respond and address your needs. Indeed, when my administration came into office, our nation was in the grips of carjacking, runaway banditry, and other violent crimes. Since then, we have achieved a year-on-year -year sustained reduction in every category of violent crime. There is no longer any excuse for you to have an illegal gun or to take the law into your own hands. I call on all Kenyans to let the authorities know about any information you have of weapons in our communities, and such small efforts, I do believe, will bring peaceful days to you and your children, your grandchildren, and indeed to all our futures. In the same vein, I also direct that all state agencies who are custodians of state firearms to ensure that they too observe strict accountability, proper management, and control of the arms under their charge in order to safeguard against pilferage, diversion, and also misuse. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya has always advocated for the adoption of strong and universal normative frameworks in arms control. We will continue to support the implementation of international, regional, as well as national instruments that disarm and decelerate this agenda. I personally take cognizance of the UN Member States' goodwill, thrust and thrust for nominating Kenya to be the President of the 7th Biannual Meeting of State Parties on the implementation of the United Nations Program of Action to prevent, combat and eradicate the illicit, illicit trade in small arms and light weapons in all its aspects that will be held at the UN headquarters in New York at the end of July of this year. Kenya will be re well represented by virtue of being chair of that conference. On the same note, we also lo are looking into the adoption of various treaties like the Arms Trade Treaty, a global instrument that regulates the international trade in conventional arms and seeks to prevent, eradicate, illicit trade trade and diversion of conventional arms. So once again in this regard, I do continue 
to emphasize to all relevant state departments and agencies to set up modalities for Kenya to accede to all treaties in this arena as they are in Kenya's national interest. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude by congratulating all our worthwhile partners in arms control, and that largely is the United Nations Office for Disarmament Affairs, their funding from the government of Japan, UNDP, the, Kenya, the African Union, the Regional Center for, all, for Small Arms, amongst many other partners who have been supporting us in these activities. As a country, we appreciate the support and cooperation that we continue to receive from international as well as regional organizations in our disarmament efforts. May I also thank all our citizens, every single one of them, for their efforts in peace building through reduction of small arms and light weapons. Let me also once again at this juncture thank our National Police Service and in particular the Kenya National Focal Point on Small Arms and Light Weapons for excellently playing their role in coordination and facilitation of various actors in this endeavor to reduce and to eventually eradicate the menace of small arms and light weapons here in Kenya. Your good work and diligent efforts are most appreciated, and I remain your solid supporter in all your endeavors. <laughs>